in this season of Advent, you'll be interested to know that the word Advent originated from the Latin word for arrival or coming. It's the hope for all of humanity in a commemoration of Christ's first coming, but it's also in anticipation of Christ's second coming. See, that's the thing that often we forget. It's not just in memory of God's first coming, God incarnate coming as man in the, in the baby Jesus, but it's also in anticipation of Christ's second coming as the King of Kings, the true hope, the true love producing joy. You got it. It's all about joy joy to the world. And you know, you can't talk about Christmas and not talk about joy. Joy for you, joy for me, joy to the world. Listen, this is such a familiar strain, a familiar line, especially in the context of the Christmas season. I mean, we hear it in famous carols, sung in bits and pieces on just about every Christmas show, Hallmark movie, and in holiday music collections that seem to be every musician's promoting in the month of December. Isn't that so? So let me share a few interesting facts about this famous, famous Christmas carol called Joy to the World. Did you know that it was originally not written to have anything to do with Christmas? Isn't that interesting? It really was about the second part of the Advent, the second coming of Christ. In 1719, that was a few years ago, Isaac Watts, the great hymn writer, published a book of poems with these lyrics to joy to the world in them. His poem was an adaptation of Psalm 98 and was meant to be more about Jesus' second coming than it really was in tribute to his first coming. The music side of Joy to the World was later added in 1839, and it was partly Handel, it was some of the inspiration from Handel's Messiah, but it was also partly Lowell Mason, who was a great composer and an arranger. But you know, it's been, this is an interesting fact, it was the most published Christmas song of all time, and yet has nothing to do with Santa Claus. Doesn't have anything to do with reindeer. It's got nothing to do with snowmen or tinsel. It's, it's got nothing to do with shopping till you drop and spending all your money, right? There's a reason why Joy to the World is so popular, famous, and even strong. I think people think it's strong. And I believe it lies in its accurate, yes, authentic roadmap to this thing called real joy. J-O-Y, the real joy. Our culture, Right now, I, I kind of liken it to a picture of a desperate group of people passing around this beautiful, lavish food tray with everything that they could ever want or need, but yet they're so hungry and at the same time unwilling to partake of this beautiful tray, unwilling to take it in. It's all like, have you ever seen kids and you hear parents, they're going, Johnny, stop playing with your food. Stop just messing around with you. Eat it. Quit playing with it. And it's almost like we are in this culture. We're playing with what God has given us, but we don't consume it. We don't take it in. You see, joy is not something that you maneuver or manage with words or with your hands. You don't hold it. You don't, you don't hold it with your hands. You possess it in your heart. For centuries, the world has tried to tap authentic joy by bypassing the source of joy. And instead, we try to independently grab all the stuff and all the power and all the materialistic ingredients to a recipe for joy that's just not real. It's fake. It's false. These worldly ingredients can never make true, authentic joy.